Hi, I'm Monty McKinnon. Thank you so much for joining me today. We have a lot of ground to cover backwards so that I can tell you what I've done and where we are today. And I'm going to do that just as soon as we spin the intro. All right, we are back, and it's good to have you back here. I've been missing you. It's been a tough week for me. I've had a lot of difficulty with the guitar, and I need to tell you about that. It started off with the fact that I made three videos, and then I made a fourth video. And the audio in the video was terrible. So I wasn't about to post that because I just won't put up something that is that bad. And... I couldn't figure it out and I got an email from Michael at Michael Builds and Michael Builds is a YouTube channel that is spectacular. You really do want to check it out and I'll put a link down below for you to have a look at some of his videos, but they're absolutely super. So he said to me, he said, have you considered the fact that maybe your battery is dead in the microphone? And I thought, no, I'm so focused on measurements here, getting this right, trying to do inlay, which was a disaster, and all of those things, I never considered the fact that the battery might have died on me, and it did. So I have recharged, and I've recharged, and we're back at it. So where I was when we left off is I was putting a wash on the front of the guitar, and there it is there. You can see that it, it kind of should show you some reflection there. That's had one coat of French polish put on it. It's going to get at least three more, maybe even more than that, to bring it up to a bright shine. Sorry about that. And what I have done is I've put the neck on. It's not, in fact, glued on. It's just bolted on. And I did that because I want to check to make sure that's the piece that you just heard here that went bang on me. And I wanna know where the bridge is gonna go and that's where this green tape comes across. And I've, I've measured approximately where the center of the bridge and the, and the saddle will be. And then I take my ruler and I measure the height here and I come up with about 11 millimeters. And that's just about perfect. That's exactly where I wanna be. Because once I put a a bridge on here and I have one here which I can show you it's gonna fit just about perfect it's slightly low which is what I want because I'm gonna have the saddle in there and there's gonna be strings and all of that good stuff going on there so more of that to come up in subsequent videos meanwhile I know that my angle of the neck is correct if it wasn't correct, I had to change it because you don't want this, it'd be too high. You don't want this, it'd be too low. You want it to be exactly right. And so that's what I have done. My shaking hands have just been a nightmare, but that's another story. So what happened was I did inlay up in here and it was atrocious. And so I decided, no, I had to take this off and put on a new one, and that's what I've done. So there will be no inlay on here because my shaking hands just frankly have won the day. I cannot do inlay, so I'm giving the equipment away so that it doesn't ever tempt me again. Now, the neck is mahogany. Look at that beautiful red there. It's, it's just perfect. And what we've got here on the back is we're getting ready to do the the fill in here and i'm going to show you that in a minute but what i would like to show you is how we get the neck straight because when the neck bolts on it could be it could be twisted this way or this way now i've got my center seam here and what i do is i put a ruler right along the side here and then i take this small ruler and i measure from the side here where the ruler will be to the center line and I have 
32 and a half millimeters. I then come over here and I measure the other side and I do the same thing. And I've got 33 millimeters. So I'm out about a half a millimeter. I'm not terribly concerned about that, so I'm not going to worry about that. That's fine. Now I know that the neck is straight to the body, to the center line here. So when I glue it here and I bolt it on, it's going to be just fine. And we're not going to have an issue with the, the nut and the strings coming down, lining up, and everything's going to play perfectly in the future. But that's how you measure. Now, if it did not work, and it did not work at first, what you have to do is take and sand in here or in here and if you sand a lot on the neck bringing the sandpaper underneath and I can't do it for you right now because it's it's bolted on but the sandpaper would come and I'd pull it down like this and I would sand this edge of the uh, guitar neck and that would in effect take the neck and pull it back over exaggerated it would look kind of like that all right so that's what happens here and that's how you make sure you get the neck straight so you got to play with this and of course you want a nice tight fit in here because that you just want a tight fit so that it will hold up perfectly all right so that's where we got to now what i have been doing here and i've been putting a wash coat on and i've just started on the back here and it is very easy to do. What I do is I've got some Brazilian dust. This is sawdust, it's end grain. And the idea of the end grain is that it will just fill up these pores. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm pore filling. And so I get that out of the way because yes, I have knocked it over, shaking hands again. Now I've got my, this is old shellac. Um, old in the sense that I used this on a previous guitar. It's an amber and I want this on here. This is just to fill it. This is nothing more. We're going to sand this. We're going to make it all good. I take an ordinary cotton ball, you know, just like you see your, your wife do when she's pulling off makeup or whatever she's doing with it. And you just put a little bit on here get that out of the way and now what I'm doing is I'm rubbing in that sawdust that you saw me put on there and this is going to take me quite a while because I am working in a particularly small area. I won't go outside of the area. You saw me come up here. I may not even go up there. I may just confine myself to here until I get this nice and smooth and I get all the pores filled because the better pore job, pore, P-O-R-E job that you did, not poor, pore. When you fill these pores up and you put the finish on, it, it comes up like glass. It's beautiful. So that's what we're going to be doing here. And I've got a lot of this to do. And that's what I've done on the front. And the front will get more. And this is all to protect the back as well as you saw me protect the front. So I know that that's all good. And this is looking pretty good. Now I've already put some filler in this previously. Now rosewood, and this is a Brazilian rosewood, is an open grain. It, there's a lot of grain to be seen in it. And so you, you'll need a lot of sawdust. And you'll do this until you feel your arm want to fall off. And when that happens, you know you're just about ready to start. It just it, It's a slow process. It's a process you can't rush and you shouldn't rush. That shellac and alcohol combination ends up drying very quickly and this little cotton ball holds an 
awful lot of shellac or French polish. French polish is really the technique. The shellac is what is going on to the guitar here at this point. I think this is great. Oh yeah, you know what? I can actually see in this the reflection of the microphone overhead already. So you imagine what this is going to look like when it's all done. It's, it's really going to be spectacular. I hope you would think about subscribing if you would be so good as to do that and perhaps uh, check out the links below. Don't forget to check out Michael Builds. It's a, it's a great website. This man has uh, got some clever, clever ideas and he's hugely funny, which I'm not and he is. So you really do want to check him out. And there is some a link down there for you if you need some Starbond uh, crazy glue, uh, super glue. I've already used their super glue on this build already. I, I've done it many times and I've gone all the way around the edge here to make sure every little bit, every dimple is filled and, and, and flat and level. And you need some of the super glue to do that. So check that out, but if you do get super glue, Make sure you use my name for a discount, but be sure to order some debonder and an accelerator as well. All right, that's it for me today. Thanks so much for joining me. As you know, I've got a lot of work to do to get this whole back done. And hopefully for the next video, I can be in a position where I can show you this and then we'll get to the sides. And then once the sides are done, then we need to finish off the peg head and it's all going to be good. So thank you again for joining me. I'll see you in the next video. Now it is time for some lukewarm, <laughs> lukewarm, wonderful Yorkshire tea. Oh, it really is good. It really seriously is good. When you can drink tea, there is no need to even think about drinking coffee. I, I don't know where my wife and I went wrong, but we have one family member who is a coffee addict, and I just don't get it. I, I, I know we've tried to break him of the habit, but it seems to be well ingrained. I gotta get him some of this Yorkshire. Come on, Peter, get with the program. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next video, bye.